Welcome to Radio Who, What, Why. I'm Jeff Sheckman. Some of you may recall a week or two ago, newly elected Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez made a splash talking about $21 trillion in misappropriated Pentagon money, which she claimed was enough to take care of Medicare for all. She based her conclusions on the misreading of an article in The Nation by investigative reporter Dave Lindorf. It's too bad because her misreading took the focus away from what the story did say about the Defense Department's shady and possibly unconstitutional budgeting practices and the massive amount of fraud that has now been uncovered. What the story did detail is how the Pentagon badly failed its audit that it has resisted for decades and the $21 trillion of financial transactions on both sides of the ledger between 1998 and 2015 could not be accounted for. We're going to talk about that today with my guest, Dave Lindorf. Dave Lindorf is an award-winning investigative reporter, a longtime contributor to The Nation, and the author of several books, including The Case for Impeachment. It is my pleasure to welcome Dave Lindorf here to talk about his story, The Pentagon's Massive Accounting Fraud Exposed. Dave Lindorf, thanks so much for joining us here on Radio Who, What, Why. Thanks so much for having me on. When we look at the totality of this story, is it a story about incompetence, mismanagement, fraud, or theft? What is this? What is the underlying issue here? Well, I think it's primarily corruption and fraud, and uh, and uh, then the it's pretty clearly going to be theft too if it gets investigated ever because. Uh, you know, when you have books that can't be monitored and that are um, basically so obtuse and fill the fake numbers that you can't make heads or tails out of them, it's an open invitation for theft. And, uh, you know, when, one of the things you're relying on at that point is the uh, high moral standards of the people involved. And clearly, there's nothing exceptional in that regard at the Pentagon. It's just another agency uh, of the federal government filled with people who are uh, you know, trying to, um, you know, uh, line their pockets in, and increase their power and increase their budgets. And it's not any different than any other agency. So if this is the one agency in the government that refuses to create an audible, auditable budget, then uh, it's uh, an open invitation for all of that. Waste, fraud, abuse, corruption. Given the scope of this $21 trillion in, in really unaccounted for monies on both sides of the ledger, th- one comes away with the impression that an awful lot of people in the government, in the Pentagon, had to be involved in all of this. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, the uh, one of the things I that I found really interesting that was uh, I had a guy on the record, uh, Jack Armstrong, who for five years was the supervising director of audits at the uh, internal auditing agency for the Pentagon, the Office of Inspector General. Uh, and uh, he he's the one who uh, you know is quoted in the piece as saying, if Congress were being honest, if the Pentagon were being honest, that they would go to Congress and say all the numbers we're giving you uh, to, uh, for our annual reports to go with our budget request are garbage. And that's pretty, pretty strong language um, for, for an agency that accounts for, what, 54 percent of disposable uh, of, of uh, discretionary budgets in the federal government. And just mind blowing. But uh, what what. Um, he also said at another point was that uh, I was asking him, you know, well, what do they mean when sometimes they say that there's, you know, almost a trillion dollars in uh, in expenditures that are supported and maybe two trillion dollars that aren't supported. And he said, oh, oh, well, supported only means in our uh, jargon at the uh, inspector general's office that they were signed off on by the appropriate higher authorities. So, in other words, all of these numbers, uh, and this is the key to the article that that, uh, Ocasio missed, is that um, these numbers are made up um, out of really out of uh, thin air. And they're used for both getting balances uh, to work out and to make the 
the budget's completely impenetrable. I mean, as, as Chuck Spinney said uh, in talking to me, he's this uh, very famous whistleblower from the 80s, the guy who uh, found that they w- had put uh, the F-18 into production with a design flaw that caused the wings to fall off. Uh, and and on a smaller scale, but one that really caught attention, that they were buying hammers that you could get in Home Depot for a couple of bucks for four hundred thirty four dollars, and toilet seats for six hundred that were not unique, but just toilet seats. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, Chuck said um, that the purpose of all this is deliberate, and it's to paralyze Congress, and and I would add to paralyze the media. Because when you see these weird numbers, you just don't want to talk, ask about them because you don't want to be labeled a kook. One of the objects of the exercise here is to do all of this with the numbers in order to garner more defense authorization from Congress. Talk about the nexus between those two things. Yeah, well, OK, so there's two things that basically is are being done by the Pentagon accountants that is deceptive and deliberately deceptive. One is they have these things called plugs, and that's not an accounting term, that's a Pentagon term, uh, for plugging in numbers into budgets that have no uh, no basis in reality and no uh, ledgers, uh, red, ledger uh, entries to support them. And then you have something else called nippering, which uh, was explained to me by a longtime Pentagon uh, accounting person who'd been there for like 30 years um, and is now a lobbyist. And he explained that uh, what they do is they, a nipper is a uh, metal shear that cuts metal. And so you can cut out pieces of metal and then move it around to something else. Um, and it, nippering is to snip out part of the budget uh, and move it so that you don't have to do what Congress requires, which is if you don't spend your money by the end of the year, uh, you have to return it to the Treasury. Uh, and so the Pentagon avoids that by shifting it into other budgets. They actually convert uh, one year money, you know, money that was all- appropriated by Congress for something like, say, the Army's operational budget uh, and is supposed to be spent by the end of the year. If it's not, it's supposed to go back to the Treasury. But they never return money to the Treasury. Uh, and so they then nipper it and turn it into five-year money, which is the kind of thing you use for funding weapons programs and things like that. And that money doesn't have to be returned till the end of the program, by which time, if you still haven't spent it, you can nipper it into another program. So, um, so what they do is they, they make it look like they spent all the money that was appropriated the prior year and then ask for more. And Congress always says obligingly, yes, and maybe we'll give you a little extra. And then the money that doesn't, that hasn't been spent, that was hidden builds up into a enormous sludge fund, which I was told could be as high by now as a hundred billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's bigger than most federal agency budgets for a year. Education, uh, uh, labor department, you know, interior, all those budgets are, are less than a hundred billion dollars. So, um, you know, it's an enormous amount of money for them to have that's uh, totally unaccountable and they could do what they want with, without any oversight whatsoever. Where does the general accounting office fit into this? Well, this was interesting too, because I got a guy who, you know, the Pentagon wouldn't talk to me. I could not get on the record any, uh, official level person. I did get a background interview with one uh, undersecretary, a deputy undersecretary level person, uh, but it was on deep background. So I can't say what unit it, it was of the Pentagon management or uh, any quote from the person. Um, I got two people who were uh, press people, one from the DOD and one from the DOD Office of Inspector General of the press office, who answered a few questions, not always particularly honestly. Um, and that was it. Uh, but I did have a lot of people off the record and a few on the record, not at the Pentagon, but former Pentagon people on the record. And then I got Asif Khan, who uh, remarkably uh, was very candid and used his name. And he is the director of 
the National Security Asset Management Unit of the GAO, which monitors the budgets of the Pentagon, the CIA, um, you know, probably Homeland Security, I would say, anything that's classified national security type budgets. And he said that, uh, and this is an astonishing thing when you, if you think about it, it should bother anybody who's a taxpayer. Um, the Pentagon has for years been on the GAO's list of uh, agencies with a high risk for fraud, waste, and abuse because of their, uh, of their horrible budgeting and, and accounting. So, um, you know, that should, <laughs> you know, people should just be outraged. Given how much misappropriation there has been, given these accounting practices that we've been talking about, it seems that it would be impossible at this point to do the kind of forensic accounting that would be necessary to even get to the bottom of this. Well, that's what happened. You know, they, they, Congress finally threw up its hands after 26 years or 28 years of stonewalling by the Pentagon and refusing a congressional act, which uh, required them to have an auditable budget and to submit to an audit each year. Uh, every other federal agency has come around to having that. Um, I think HUD was the last one, maybe around 215 or something like that, to get it together. Um, the Pentagon never did. And so Congress just kind of threw up its hands and said, well, you're going to be audited and uh, we're allocating $900 million for this year to have you audited by a bunch of outside accounting firms. So Pricewaterhouse, uh, oh, no, Ernst & Young was hired to supervise that. And there were 1,200 auditors from a variety of, of outside you know, repu reputable firms that were pouring over the books for uh, a year. And uh, November 15th, which was their deadline, they basically came out and said, we can't do it. It's a failure. Uh, it's an epic failure. I mean, it's like this is much worse than Enron. They they couldn't really uh, do the books at all. And they and I was told by Asif Khan in September, months before they reported this, he said, there's no way they're going to do an audit. They're just going to come up with a list of thousands of deficiencies that have to be fixed before they can do an audit. And that's exactly what they've had to do. So, uh, and he, and he also told me it's going to be years before they can really have a clean audit because, uh, in order to do an audit, you have to have a reliable set of books from the prior year. And the Pentagon doesn't have a reliable set of books from the prior year. So, uh, and to get that, I, you know, they don't have it this year. They won't have it next year. Uh, he said, it'll be several years at best. He said that would, that would be if the Pentagon was fully cooperating and I don't see signs that they are was what he told me. So that's pretty grim, you know, <laughs> And yet nobody's being arrested. Nobody's being fired. Um, it, it's, it's pretty mind boggling. Um, the, the Congress is afraid of the Pentagon. They're afraid to be accused of not supporting the troops. The media uh, also, uh, the mass media, the corporate media, buys into this, uh, you know, American militarist policy for the most part. And uh, they also are afraid of being labeled conspiracy theorists. So they don't want to look at this either for what it really is. Nobody uh, here. Here's a here's a interesting thing. When when we ran the story initially online a couple of weeks ago, uh, we got flooded with uh calls from people like you, lots of Pacifica shows and programs uh, for interviews about the story, but not one mainstream news organization has reached out and asked about it. Not one. Is there a way to deal with this going forward? In other words, if it can't be solved looking back over this long period of time going back, as, as you talk about in the story, all the way back to 1998, can it be cleaned up going forward and simply writing off all the waste, fraud, and abuse that has happened up to this point? What what has to be done really is now I've thought a lot about this. Uh, the, the 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 real problem is that this system has been uh, essentially an escalator to make the budget go up every year unjustifiably. It's a built-in 
uh, way of just jacking up the budget. And because look, we have a record budget now, and we aren't even really seriously at war. The only thing that that could remotely be called a war is Afghanistan, and we only have fifteen thousand guys there, which is two point eight percent of what we had in Vietnam during the you know years of sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty nine, seventy eight, seventy two. Uh, you know, when it was a real hot war, um, nothing like that. We don't have a war. We're the 15,000 guys are theoretically not even fighting. They're kind of supposed to be, uh, uh, trainers and, you know, supervisors of the Afghan army. So we don't have a war and yet we have a record budget. And that's the great success of the Pentagon. It's basically about, not national security, but uh, increasing a budget for the people that work there. Um, and and so what we really need to do at this point, when we have an agency that large that's eating up half our dis- discretionary income um, and at great uh, opportunity cost for the things that Americans really need, uh, is to have a thorough evaluation, like a sort of a zero budgeting based evaluation of the military and what we really need and why. And I would argue that, you know, we probably could get by with 10, 20% of the Pentagon that we have now because Russia's budget has been declining for the last few years. While we're told that they're an existential threat to us, they, they actually spend less than Saudi Arabia. So we really need this huge evaluate reevaluation of why we're spending, you know, close to a trillion dollars a year on, uh, on our military and how we got there. Where does the $21 trillion number that was bandied about, that was reported because of Ocasio-Cortez's comments, where does that $21 trillion number come from within the context of this story? Oh, the, the, the guy that gets the credit for that is Mark Skidmore and, and also uh, a uh, woman, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz, who was an assistant treasurer under George Herbert Walker Bush's administration in the uh, HUD, Housing and Urban Development, uh, because she found the same kinds of things going on there when she worked there and got interested in this. Uh, But what Mark did was he heard about uh, a $6.5 trillion army budget uh, you know, with 6.5 trillion in these entries on the on the asset and liability side of the ledger uh, in 2015 from a, a uh, OIG audit of the Army budget, because the the OIGs never audited the whole Pentagon budget. They order a they or do they're a small operation and they do one part of the Pentagon budget each year, maybe Marines one year, Navy one year, Army one year, you know, that kind of thing. And so that year they did the Army. It was a $122 billion budget that year. And they had $6.5 trillion of entries, you know, like a uh, uh, billion dollars of accounts receivable, which are bills due, and uh, like $800 billion in uh, funds supposedly transferred to the Army from the Treasury Department. And they were bogus numbers. And so he looked into it to see, well, what is going on here? Um, And he decided to look at all the years of the OIG reports on different parts of the budget. Uh, Going back, uh, he just randomly, I guess, picked uh, that one, the 2015, back to uh, 1998, which would be uh, 17 years. Uh, And um, that's where he got the total of these entries. He had two doctoral students working with him, and he he came up with the $21 trillion and change. And uh, nobody reported that, by the way. That, that re- he did a report with Catherine Fitz at, in uh, 2017, and it didn't get reported anywhere but the alternative media. Um, so I give a lot of credit to Representative elect Ocasio because even though she got it wrong, uh, and it would be hard to get it right in a tweet because <laughs> it's a complicated <laughs> story, what she did was for the first time in uh, since 2001, uh, she got the these this kooky number reported in a mainstream uh, publication, the Washington Post, which has studiously avoided reporting it when the study came out. 
uh, and didn't report the $6.5 trillion either, and didn't report any of them. You, you know, where's the Washington Post's investigative team working on this? Where's the New York Times investigative team working on this? They're not. Do you think it's the complexity of the story that keeps people away from it, or there's other, there are other reasons? Well, look, when in, in uh, 2001, and I write about this uh, briefly in the article, in 2001, on September 10th, uh, which is a number, you know, people should sort of remember. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld held a press, who was the, pre- the, uh, the Secretary of Defense at that time under George Bush, uh, Jr. He uh, held a press conference to announce that his office had found $2.3 trillion in untraceable financial transactions, was the term he used, uh, in the Pentagon's budget. And he said uh, very sternly, he said, this is a matter of life and death to find out what this is and what this money and transactions are about. And he said, uh, the enemy, it turns out, uh, of the United States is not Russia or China. It's the Pentagon bureaucracy. And nobody had ever, you know, except perhaps Eisenhower in his farewell address has said anything remotely as strong as that. Uh, critical of the Pentagon and, uh, it, it, you know, before that, and nobody said anything about it since then. So, um, you know, I, I, he didn't know what it was. Uh, I, I'm i speculating that, you know, maybe Mattis doesn't know what it is either. I mean, how can you, uh, I think the Pentagon's sort of operating on autopilot and just boosting its budget all the time, which, which, you know, people like Mattis are happy about and everybody else. Um, and, uh, they may not even know what they're spending money on because you, you can't, I don't know how you manage a thing like the Pentagon when you don't have books that you can rely on, but you know, from the point of view of the Pentagon, it works. They keep getting more money. So what the hell, you know, they don't run out. Um, but, but to your question about why it doesn't get reported on, I think that since 2001, uh, 9-11, the media has fallen on its face. Uh, it acts patriotic uh, at the expense of truth, and they're afraid of these kinds of accusations, you know, both not supporting the troops and of, uh, of you know, buying into conspiracy theories. You know, the truth is, $21 trillion over that period of time works out to about $1.5 trillion per year. And if you were actually, if that was actual money as some, you know, uh, ill thought out articles on, on the left and on the right have written, uh, we would never have had any recessions that that would be an incredible <laughs> amount of uh, deficit spending into the economy every year. We'd have a lot of inflation, but we wouldn't have any recessions and there's no sign of that money flowing into the economy. It's not real money. Dave Lindorf, his article, his cover story in The Nation, is the Pentagon's massive accounting fraud exposed. Dave, I thank you so much for spending time with us here on Radio Who, What, Why. Thank you for having me on and for letting me, you know, try to explain this thing. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you for listening and for joining us here on Radio Who, What, Why. I hope you join us next week for another Radio Who, What, Why podcast. I'm Jeff Sheckman. If you like this podcast, please feel free to share and help others find it by rating and reviewing it on iTunes. You can also support this podcast and all the work we do by going to whowhatwhy.org forward slash donate.